Today, Cincinnati is going hog wild. The 2017 Flying Pig Marathon will bring hundreds of thousands of people downtown. Tonight, we're getting you ready to run, walk, or watch. I think just being prepared for the changes and knowing about them in advance. From changes to the course to what you should bring with you on race day. Doesn't matter what they like, what disease they have. Like, nothing's impossible. To the stories that make the Flying Pig so special, WLWT is your home for coverage of the Flying Pig Marathon weekend. This is a WLWT presentation, the stories behind the marathon. And good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Dardis. And I'm Sheree Palello. So the Flying Pig Marathon takes off in a little more than three weeks. And if you are a runner, well, your training is probably in high gear. So if you are as excited as we are, or maybe you need a little bit of an extra push, like me, we are here tonight <laughs> to get you ready for the start line. All right, WLWT News Site's George Vogel following some of the runners as they train for those 26.2 miles. Hi, George. Hey there. Yeah, we're on Madison Avenue heading towards O'Brienville, and we found a training group here that runs out of Bob Ronker's running spot, and they've got about 50 of them out here training tonight. And this is the way to do it, especially if you are a first-time marathoner, you need to find a group of people. It helps push you along, keeps you going. You don't want to just wake up and say, hey, guess what? I'm running 26 miles today. No, you have to play it smart and train for the flying pig. All right, friends, are we ready? Okay. If you're going to do it, do it right. This training group started at the beginning of the year and will have these runners ready to go on race day. Just the training itself can be an accomplishment. It is amazing where we've ran. We've been all over downtown, over into Newport, um, Mount Adams, places like when you look on the map and think, I've ran that far, it's kind of crazy. Nice job, guys. Nice job, Tonson. They train two to three times a week for four months, and training is not just for beginners. Nice job, you guys. For me, I've done it several times, but it's fun with the training group because I have a lot of new people, I have a lot of first-time marathoners, and it brings back some of the excitement again. You're doing great. Thank you, Chris. The four-month regimen is built to increase stamina and distance, and if you haven't been training, be careful. What you don't want to do this late in the game is overdo it. So you don't want to be going out and adding lots of mileage that you otherwise haven't done. All right, 345, here we go. If you do it right, you have every reason to believe you'll end up crossing that finish line. Be confident and, and tell yourself that you've put, put in your training and you're prepared yourself the right way and you can get through it on race day. I do not have a clue what that's going to feel like and that's why I'm doing this. I want to know what it's going to feel like when I finish that. I want to know that I've set a goal and accomplished something that not everybody can do. And our training group has reached O'Brienville. They're at Bob Ronker's where they're stopping for water. Then they will continue their training from here. They're going to run all the way down Madison to Dana, then Dana back to Listerman Brewery, which is a great place to end a run because they are working up quite a sweat out here. Uh, I'm going to meet them at Listerman's. I won't be sweating because I'm sitting in beautiful air conditioning in this vehicle. But we're going to be back there and talk to some of these folks when they get through with their training run. But again, I can't emphasize enough, if you want to run in the pig next year, get in one of these training groups. It's a great way to go, keeps you motivated, gets you on the pace you need to be on so you're ready to go when that first weekend in May rolls around. In O'Brienville, I'm George Vogel. Let's go back to the studio for more on the pig. All right, George, that was a really neat shot driving along. And how did I know that George would end up in a car uh, along the route while everybody else is running. Well, there are some major changes to the Flying Pig course. Street construction projects on both sides of the river forcing race officials to make some adjustments. Making changes to the course is a process. And it's a process that race coordinators want you to be aware of. It starts before you even take off. The starting line has been moved a couple hundred feet west along Maring Way between Central Avenue and Elm Street. When you cross the Taylor Southgate Bridge into Newport, you will now turn left onto 3rd Street, then two blocks later, take a right onto Saratoga, and another right on 4th Street, and then you will be back on the usual route. Once you're back into Cincinnati, you'll turn left off the Clay Wade Bailey Bridge as normal, but then at the first intersection, take a right onto Guest Street to get to 7th. Full marathoners will see the next change from mile 11 through 18. You will now stay on Erie Avenue after the Hyde Park Square and head into East Hyde Park. At the bottom of the hill, 
You're going to turn onto Murray Road and go past the traffic triangle and then turn around. And finally, the route will now go two blocks farther on the Fairfax bike trail until you hit Germania Street. I think just being prepared for the changes and knowing about them in advance um, will help you mentally prepare for what you need to know on race day. And there will be extra volunteers and signage to help runners with the changes. All of these changes temporary for this year's race. The two road projects are expected to be all finished up by race day next year. OK, so you probably have more questions than just the course changes. So the Flying Pig officials have you covered once again. We're going to slow jam the pig. Our event is all about the pig and you are all our VIPs, our very important pigs. You'll see pigs from the time you arrive until the time you cross the finish swine in Cincinnati. Just don't hog the finish swine, baby. <laughs> Executive Race Director Iris Simpson Bush has answered a lot of your questions in their very own version of Jimmy Fallon's Slow Jam the News. Get your questions answered by watching the full video right on our website, WLWT.com. Okay, let's face it, you have to be tough to run a marathon, right? And for some, running gets them through tough times, too. WLWT News says Lisa Cooney has one woman's story of running through the pain of losing loved ones, her own cancer diagnosis, and all while inspiring others to never give up. You feel proud? What do you oh, think absolutely. You feel like this table? I feel proud. I feel a lot of sweat and tears in all of this. They take up her entire dining room table, medals from 40 marathons and more. Flying pig medals take up a lot of room too, and some from the world's best known race, the Boston Marathon. This is Erin before the 2013 race. She was running in memory of her sister, who recently passed away. Erin says her sister was her guardian angel that day, helping her finish the race 18 minutes before the bombing. This is the Loveland bike trail. Erin often trains here. She says running has gotten her through some of the toughest times in her life. The death of her sister, her father, her mother, and less than a year ago, a diagnosis of breast cancer. Five surgeries, three biopsies, and through it all, Erin kept running. In this case, Erin credits the spirit of her deceased mother for saving her life. Erin saw a mammography van from the same cancer center that treated her mom, and on a whim, Erin knocked on the door. She said, do you have an appointment? And I said, no. And she said, come on in, honey. And she grabbed me, and she took my history, and they gave me a mammogram. I do believe, you know, that was there by her. She was looking out for me, saying, Erin, get a mammogram. That's when they found the cancer. Erin continued her training in between treatments and procedures and believes running helped her cope. Her battle and determination has been an inspiration for others, and Erin says she is inspired at every race. If you sit at a finish line and you see everybody that crosses, it's amazing. It's all shapes and sizes, all ages. I mean, it truly is. I mean, if you think you can't do it, you can. Lisa Cooney, WLWT News 5. Boy, what an inspirational story there. Erin is also raising money to help find a cure for breast cancer and also to help women get screened who can't afford it. Flying Pig Marathon has grown so much since it began 19 years ago. It's become more of a community event, as you know, centered around the race. A woman who ran the first marathon says that she has loved to see it grow. Every year I can see more and more people participating and more of the city participating. Right. It is so great to see. That great lady is turning 86 on the day of the flying pig. She had planned on running the marathon to celebrate it, but unfortunately she is hurt, so she will not be running in this year's marathon. We are a little bit early, but we need to say happy 86th oh, birthday to you. I'm telling you, that is what it's all about. Just countless stories just like hers. So the Flying Pig Weekend takes off Friday, May 5th with the PNG Health and Fitness Expo. And then the first race of the weekend, the Little King's Mile steps off Friday night. Saturday starts off with the 10K at 8 o'clock in the morning, followed by the 5K at 10. Saturday is also a day for the family with several races for your kids and even your pets. And then Sunday is the big day with the marathon, half marathon, and the relay races 
Rose. It all kicks off at 630 in the morning. All right, if you're not like George Vogel and you can't find a car, maybe you want to stay at home and watch the marathon right here on WLWT. We're going to kick things off at the start line 6 o'clock in the morning, and then we have a team of reporters following the runners out in the course through the full and the half marathon. And then we will greet, mm -hmm. Sheree and I will, the runners at the finish swan. It really is one of our favorite events throughout the year, Meet right? Meet so many people we haven't seen in a year. I they know. come by and say and hi. And we always, people will say in news, you always tell the bad stories. This is one of those mornings where it's just one inspiring story one after, after the, the next. Yeah. All right, many people are running the marathon, as we've mentioned, for a purpose. And this year, a team will be running the 26.2 miles to prove that a dash is what's very important. On the tombstone, you see the birth and the death of somebody. It's the dash in between that matters. Well, that's Steve, and he just lost a cancer battle that lasted more than a decade. And coming up, how his message is still very much alive thanks to his son and a huge team of supporters. And I know you met him. You're doing that story, and it's a personal one for you. Plus, getting involved in the pig weekend without running. We're going to show you the ways that you can spread your wings this year. You're watching Cincinnati's WLWT News 5. And welcome back, everybody. The Flying Pig Marathon is about people running with a purpose for a loved one, a friend, a special cause. And this year's pig features a team running in honor of a very brave man who battled melanoma for more than a decade. I interviewed him back in 2012, and Steve Hazelbeck's message is still being delivered today, loud and clear, eight months after his death. He was a warrior in every sense of the word. Given no more than 18 months to live, he traveled across America trying more than 15 treatments. He had to take it right at the, the first joint. Taking every vicious punch melanoma dished out for 11 years. He used the ugly cancer to send out a beautiful message. Cherish the time you have and use it wisely. On the tombstone, you see the birth and the death of somebody. It's the dash in between that matters. That was Steve Hazelbeck five years ago when I first met him at his Liberty Township home and he definitely made the most of that dash in between. He joined the board of Melanoma No More, started running the Flying Pig Marathon to get the word out about skin cancer prevention and getting regular screenings. Steve's team was growing, the momentum was rolling, and then he finally lost his battle in August at the age of 57. Steve has very strong weld and very stubborn. <laughs> And um, he was determined. Like what you said, like I've grieved for 10 years. After 36 years of marriage, Janet wanted Steve's mission to continue. But how? He said, I'm going to recommend you for the board of melanoma no more. And I said, I, I said, it's just too raw. I can't do it right now. And um, I said, I think Ben would be great. And Ben is amazing. Ben is Steve and Janet's 27-year-old son. He's taken the baton from dad, joining the board, and now training to run the full marathon that first Sunday in May at the Pig. He says his father is watching from heaven. I think he is legitimately proud of, of what I'm doing and, and what I intend to do as moving forward because this isn't, you know, this doesn't end on May 7th when the race ends. You know, this, this battle is going to continue, you know, you know, for as long as it takes. After graduating from the University of Kentucky, Ben spent three years working in Colorado. With Steve back here getting weaker and weaker, Ben knew it was time to come home, taking a job transfer to be by his dad's side. I got to spend the last year with him and, and really talking about things that were important to him, things like his legacy and whatnot. And, and, and this organization, Mel No No More, is one thing that he was, uh, very, he was very passionate about. Ben won't be alone. An army of more than 100 will be part of a team called Running for Steve, spread out over several of the Flying Pig events. It puts a smile on Ben's face, and it reminds him Dad's goals are being reached even after his death. Until the Lord decides what he wants to do with me, um, I, I want to help others. And I want to, one person at a time, 10 people at a time, it doesn't matter. No longer here in body, but his spirit is strong. And don't worry, Steve, people are still listening. So on a personal note, after interviewing Steve five years ago, I actually had a few suspicious areas on my face checked out. So I've been to the dermatologist for treatment three or four times since. So Steve, if you're listening somewhere, you are making a big difference. And if you'd like to spread Steve Hazelbeck's message and 
raise awareness and much needed money for melanoma no more, just go to our website, WLWT.com. There's a link there in Steve's story that will allow you to donate to his son Ben's team running the full marathon, just what Steve would have wanted. I know that one was personal for you. Heartfelt, beautiful story there. And Ben, we are gonna be waiting for you at the finish line. Can't wait to see you do it for your dad and everyone else. If you are running, or maybe if running isn't your thing, there are still plenty of other ways to participate in the Flying Pig Weekend too. Volunteers help make the pig fly, if you will, lovingly known as grunts. More than 5,600 volunteers are needed to help make the marathon as special as it is. Volunteers are needed for each event along the courses, at the medical stations, and even at the expo throughout that entire weekend. And another important job the squealers that's what the flying pig calls all of the spectators along the course they really help make this marathon so great it's why it gets national and international recognition so they're out there encouraging the thousands of runners it is something that runners really look forward to at every turn along the marathon route so for squealers there are specific party zones set up at some of the best viewing spots along the course and the Flying Pig Marathon has something for everyone, including people with disabilities who do not want to run competitively. Good job, guys. <laughs> it's a race to the finish line for these Flying Pig participants. We are getting ready for our big day. But this race is being done over a few months. We actually start training at the beginning of the year, and we do it every Saturday. The Pig Abilities is a chance for people with a disability to go the distance, they walk each mile together before Marathon Weekend. We try and get them build up as much as we can to the mile walk for the pig abilities. And on Saturday, May 6th, they will finish their final mile, crossing the finish line to receive a pig abilities medal. Getting the uh, medals at the end. It's really nice because throughout the year, they're able to reflect back on that and say, hey, I earned that. You know, I was able to win that medal. The Pig Abilities Challenge encourages an active lifestyle using the training groups to help them learn how to make healthy choices. Pig Ability is great. Now the fifth annual Pig Abilities Run takes off on the Saturday of the Flying Pig Weekend at one o'clock in the afternoon. And the pig features so many, as we've been seeing already, inspiring stories. And this is one that hit us last mm -hmm. year. One is a little boy we introduced you to. I got out of the chair and I walked the finish line. I caught up with Diego Ramirez and his new inspiration for crossing the finish line this year. Running a long race, your, your feet take the brunt of the, the race itself. Getting prepared to run 26.2 miles and the full marathon. Do you have the gear that you need to go the distance? We're going to check off what you need one by one when we come back next on WLWT News 5. <laughs> That's what we do. And welcome back, everybody, to our Flying Pig special. 25 days to go before the big race. Are you ready? Yeah, so there are a lot of things to consider before you lace up those shoes. And WLWT News 5 Sports Director George Vogel live now with a checklist for all of you runners out there. Hi, George. Hey there. Yeah, somehow we have made it. The Listerman's Brewery is our landing spot here. This is actually where that training group we showed you about 20 minutes ago. They're going to be coming down Dana Avenue and ending their run here. Uh, at, a, at a brew house, which is not a bad idea after that 45 minute run they're gonna have. But if you are a new runner or a flying pig streaker, there are some basic things you're gonna wanna have with you on race day. And right now we have your flying pig gear checklist. On the top of the list is a good pair of shoes. Yep. Training program director Rick Lucan says, don't rely on those shoes you've been training on for months. Get a new pair of shoes now get a couple of runs in them before the race, a couple of miles here and there, and then they'll be race ready. Then don't forget about socks. Rick suggests something synthetic, not cotton. Also consider compression socks or sleeves. This provides compression in areas where your muscles are taking a lot of beating, and this will provide support and ultimately enables you to recover a little better. To avoid chafing, Rick says apply an anti-chafing stick to areas of your body where fabric could rub against it. That includes your feet. As for clothing, consider a technical fabric to help with moisture and a race belt to store nutrition, such as gels and chews. 
but it's definitely something you want to be taking during the long races as your body depletes sugar and you need to replenish it as you go along. And we're back live here at Listerman's where a meeting spot for the training group we showed you earlier. And they certainly uh, have been doing this right from the get go, getting ready for that big run coming up the first weekend of May, the Flying Pig Marathon. And I guys, I guess if I didn't get out of the car and join that training group earlier, I guess I can't join these folks back here at the picnic table now. So I'm going to play it straight. I'm going to play it fair. And I'm going to just come on back to the studio and be a good boy tonight. Let's go back to Mike and Cherie. If it takes him longer than 15 minutes, we we'll know, know that he changed right, his we'll mind. Right, we know the truth. All right, we've been talking so many great moments. But for me, at moment number one last year, we practically couldn't talk. We got emotional about right. this. The little boy who showed us the true meaning of the flying pig, he got out of that running stroller and he walked across the finish line. Yeah, talking about Diego Ramirez here. He has Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And once again this year, his dad is going to be pushing him the entire marathon race. But then this year when Diego walks across that finish line, he's going to be doing it for someone else. If you saw it happen, you'll never forget it. Then 11 year old Diego Ramirez, who was told he would stop walking by the age of eight, got out of his running stroller and proved doctors wrong. Last year was about Diego and his fight. This year, he and his family are paying it forward. Every step he makes will be honoring Troy Bishop and all the kids that are there that need that message to come out. Joey Bishop of Ludlow, Kentucky also had Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And while he lived to be 18, police say he died in pain from bed sores and neglect. We want to honor him. He had a very rough uh, ending and we don't want it to happen silently. Diego's mom, Leslie, has no idea what happened to Joey or why, but she understands the physical and emotional pain of caring for someone with a terminal illness. It's a nightmare, daily nightmare. That it is. You don't go any night without like suffering about the future. And living with Duchenne takes a toll on the entire family. The challenges of keeping a marriage strong, uh, like how to parent, like money issues, like paying the bills, insurance issues, like finding the right. It's just crazy. Leslie lost her marriage and had to give up her job at Procter & Gamble. These kids are awesome. They rock. She says the support she's gotten since Diego stepped across that finish line saved her. Just opening doors, giving me perspective. I've gotten a lot of support from people who help me being stronger. And I need to say that I think God is there and he's helping. <laughs> so the message this year, be a friend and do Shen to let people know they're not alone either. <laughs> being a show off today. And if this little boy can do it, so can you. Doesn't matter what they like, what disease they have, like nothing's impossible. <laughs> this little boy, that family has stolen my heart. I'm going to cry. As for Diego, his parents were told that he would stop walking by the time he was eight. He is now 12 and since crossing the finish line uh, one year ago, he has been accepted into a clinical trial and is doing even better than expected. A true miracle there. And now we're going to make it on race day with all these people coming across the line here at WLWT. We are getting ready for five hours of live race coverage Sunday morning. We're going to bring you the race. Yeah, that first Sunday in May, the inspiring stories of people who complete the 26.2 miles. Such a fun day for us. It's a community event. It's a station party. We hope you'll join us starting at six in the morning on race day Sunday. And until then, stick with WLWT on air online for your complete flying pig coverage. And we will see you Sunday, May 7th.